The band Scooter asked us, Sven Helbig, Clemens Pirch and I, to do this album. And they said that the idea is that uh, it should be something creative with our songs, but the rest, do what you want. We started to create 13 piano pieces. They are all very different. They have different influences from different musical styles. They have a very own um, sound language. It's very different from what Scooter are doing, but the melodies are recognizable. And after the album was released, there were these interviews and all of this about the album. And I've got the question um, a few times, like you're a classical pianist, you're playing classical music, and now you're doing something new. Why are you doing something new? And for me, it was uh, hard to find an answer on this question because I, w I was wondering why is this question really present in this when, when we're talking about this album because actually this is nothing really new what we did there the music is new and it was something very special for me to be part of birth of new music which it didn't exist before and I, I was the first one to perform these pieces and th this was very special for me to also have an influence and have contact with the composer and I also added some musical ideas of myself and so on and um, that was much fun but uh, basically what we did there it was taking a melody and doing something new creative with that like a variation or a transcription and this is something what composers did in the last five centuries and this melody was originally composed in 1929 in France. What we did with this melody sounds like this. musical styles influencing each other was the case in the last centuries also. And this was something totally normal that uh, a composer, a musician was taking a melody from, for example, um, church music or folk music or a piece from another composer or whatever and making an own piece of art. I realized how wrong we use the, the word classical music. Um, if, we, if we take a look on the history of music, a quick look on the history of music, we have the era of classical music, which is around the 18th century, and the prominent uh, representatives of this musical era are Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn. And then after this era of music, there was the romantic era of music, which is um, represented by Frederick Chopin, uh, Clara and Robert Schumann, uh, Peter Tchaikovsky. And then after the romantic era of music, there was the modern uh, era of music, which began uh, somewhere after the beginning of the 20th century. And this is the era where we are still in it's the modern music, the contemporary music. And before the era of the classical music, there was the Baroque, Johann Sebastian Bach, and before was the Renaissance. A Prokofiev piano sonata, which... This is not classical music. This is modern music. Or if we talk about here. <laughs> this is romantic music. This is influenced, of course, by what happened before, but this is romantic music. This is not classical music. And um, this... 
This is classical music. <laughs> and I do play. I, I do play classical music, but I play also romantic and uh, contemporary music and also some Baroque and Renaissance pieces. And different musical styles influencing each other is something that is happening right now. And there is a special, um, special thing about the time now is that we have so many different musical styles because in our time we don't have to travel to another country to experience and get to know another musical language, another musical style or different instruments. We have the globalization, we have the internet now, so we can sit at home and uh, go through the internet and experience music of the whole world and experience also music from the last centuries. And that means that the artists who are creating music right now, they are all, or we are all influencing each other. This is a great thing about a wonderful, great melody that you can really make a cover variation in so many different styles and so many musical languages. That's very interesting to, to have a look at it and to look how uh, different melodies are going from different centuries, from different countries, and how they meet, how they inspire different artists to do something new. All piano lovers, all pianists know the Piano Concerto Number no. 1 by Peter Tchaikovsky. Let's have a look at the Piano Concerto. Everyone knows the entrance of the Piano Concerto, the beginning, this... Da -da -da -da. Singing the the orchestra part, this uh, not the best singer. Uh, this is actually not the main theme. Many people think that this is the entrance, the main theme. This is not the main theme. This is the opening of the concerto. And the main theme starts here. This is the main theme. And this is a folk song. This is an actual folk song that was very popular in this time, a Ukrainian folk song that he included in his music and he variated the song through the whole first movement. And if we go to the second movement, we have uh, this melody. This, the orchestra is playing this melody and the, and the piano is supporting this. And <laughs> this is a French song, a French uh, dancing chanson, which was very popular in this time. He used this song in his second movement to, to show also this mood of, of joy and fun, meeting friends, having fun together. And uh, he variates this song that comes back again many times in the second movement. And then you have the third movement, which is the famous beginning. And this is a very famous Ukrainian folk song, which is um, in Russian called Vidi Vidi Vanka. That means Ivan, come out, let's dance together. And then they were dancing all together. And um, I have here a recording of, I asked yesterday um, a Ukrainian friend of mine how to pronounce it the right way in the U Ukrainian language, because I'm not fluent in U Ukrainian language. And I want to say it right. This is the actual name of this song. Oi ty vidi, oi Ivanku. This is... Uh, an actual folk song. And this is one of the most performed piano concertos on today's stages. There is this other uh, example about the Corelli variations. La Folia is um, actually a folk dance from Portugal, which was popular before the Renaissance time. It goes like this. And this melody was written down by Arcangelo Corelli as um, a piece for strings. It sound, sounded in the Renaissance time, the, before Bach, a long time ago, it sounded a little bit like this. I'm 
trying to make it sound um, more like this re Renaissance style of music and there are countless of variations on this melody and one of them is actually the Spanish Rhapsody by Franz Liszt, Romantic Time. So this is the main melody of the Spanish Rhapsody of Liszt. Rachmaninoff wrote the Corelli variations when he was moving already from Russia to uni the United States. He spent many years in the United States and this is his last piano work that he ever wrote. This is a 25 minutes variations work that contains many, many little uh, variations. They are going to the climax at the end and there's a very, very creative way to show his love for this melody. So you have and then it goes louder and louder and uh, after 15 minutes of super creative music you hear this theme again in, in a different key. stream now as a spontaneous stream today and I'm just going live. Hi everyone! So great to see all of you again. How are you doing? Basically I'm streaming my practice. The camera is on so everyone can just click on the link and watch me practice. We have people in our Twitch community, they're 17, 18, 21, around this age. There are people who are 30, 35, there are people who are 60 or 70 years old. 
I know we were listening to the Pathetique Sonata when I was learning this piece. I went to the point when I really wanted to listen to some different um, recordings to get some new inspiration. And we were listening to, to some different interpretations on YouTube. And we talked about them. And that was so interesting to, to exchange our impressions on the music. And there are people who are coming over and over again who are part of the community. And I appreciate that so much. It's so much fun and it gives me much inspiration. All of this doesn't really matter. You don't need to know the historical background of a piece or kind of music or whatever to appreciate the music. The best case is when you are sitting there or lying or standing or whatever and you're just enjoying the music. You don't need to know when it was written and where the melody comes from and all this. This is not important. The important is the emotional content and the vibes of the music. When you go to a concert, to a live concert, and you experience the music with all of your senses, even if you really enjoy the concert, um, you will not remember everything about this concert. You will not remember every piece, how it was played. You will not remember the clothes or er everything what happened on this evening. You, you will f forget all of this, but you will never forget this moment that made you cry. And you will never forget the moment that gave you ghost bumps or made you have the special memory or the special emotion because, because we never forget emotions. And this is what all this is about. This is what music is about. Mm -hmm.